Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you follow our other videos, we talked about a floating axle and what is a floating axle. Jeep has just revealed the 2024 Jeep Wrangler and Dana 44 axles, floating axles, are now standard in the Rubicon. So what the heck's a floating axle? So bear with me, I got some props here. We're gonna try and show you what a floating axle is. Let's start off first with the whys. Why a floating axle? What is advantageous about a floating axle? It's a little more robust. Floating axle does not hold the vehicle weight. The floating axle only has to handle rotational force. So it's not actually holding the weight of the vehicle. Floating axles are, axles are actually not new technology. You'll find them on semi trucks. You'll find them on heavy duty trucks. You'll also find them on race cars because they're safer. In the event an axle breaks, you don't lose your tire and wheel assembly. It stays on the vehicle. Easier to repair and they're better if you want to put larger tires on. So let's explain why all this? The Jeep Wrangler Rubicon gets a 5,000 pound tow rating. Why? Because the weight of the vehicle essentially is not being held by the axle. You're thinking, well, sure it is. The axle's under the vehicle. Well, I'm going to explain to you in a second why I say that. So because of this, the tow rating gets increased to 3,500 pounds. But let me explain why. If any of you have ever been off-roading and you actually break an axle on a semi-floating axle, uh, what happens? Your tire and wheel assembly come off Let's say this is my tire and wheel assembly. So I'll grab something for fun. Let's say this is my axle. Bear with me, I know the props are, are brutal here, right? So you're driving and you lose your tire and wheel assembly, your axle shaft and your tire and wheel with your lug nuts, everything comes off. You've got just your axle tube and you gotta get it, figure out how you're gonna get your vehicle back off the trail and get yourself to safety. Now imagine that same situation if you were a NASCAR driver and you broke an axle. That, that tire and wheel assembly become a missile at 100 miles an hour. So what happens on a semi-floating axle is this is your tire and wheel assembly. This is your axle shaft. Basically at the end of your axle shaft is, this is very, very basic. So I'm sure people are gonna call me out on various things I'm missing. I'm just trying to dumb this down. Basically, imagine your axle shaft is basically bolted to this. So when the vehicle is moving, you get your rotational torque through the axle shaft, but you're also getting the weight of the vehicle on this axle shaft because your tire and wheel is bolted to this axle shaft. So not only is this shaft holding the weight of the vehicle, it also has the mechanical torque moving the vehicle forward under the same axle, under the same one unit, if that makes sense. So now um, this orange piece basically is, is something you don't normally see. It's inside your axle shaft that goes from the center of your axle, the, the differential out to the tire. So this is something you don't normally see. So yes, your axle technically is still holding the weight of your vehicle. I understand that, but you're gonna see what I mean in a second. Imagine on the outside of your axle tube, which you have to envision here, imagine that there was Instead of this being your tire wheel assembly, there's a hub assembly here, okay? And your tire and wheel assembly then bolt to the hub assembly. So what will happen is this axle in the center, this axle shaft, is splined on this side as well as inside the rear differential. So when this tire basically is, is mounted on a hub assembly, the hub assembly is taking the weight of the Jeep. So the hub assembly is doing the job. There's bearings inside that hub assembly. That's holding the weight of the Jeep. This axle, now it can float inside the axle tube. It's splined inside the differential and it's splined here. So this, this can float. So literally this no longer has the weight pulling down on this side from the tire being mounted directly to the axle shaft because the tire and wheel assembly are mounted to the hub assembly that's mounted to the end of the axle tube. So the axle tube and everything else is taking that weight. So this literally just has now splined into your hub assembly and into your rear differential. The only thing this shaft, this axle has to do is give rotational force to move the vehicle forward or backward, I suppose. Now, if this shaft were to break under heavy torque or whatever would cause it to break, a few things happen. One, your shaft is broken inside, but because your tire and wheel assembly are not bolted to the shaft, it's not gonna fall off. 
it's not going to come sliding out. Basically, the only way you know it is you're not moving anywhere, but visually you're going to look out and not see that your, your tire and wheel are like this out of the Jeep. For one, getting off a trail becomes easier because you can get towed off without having to reinvent the wheel. See what I did there? Also, it's safer. That wheel is not coming off to hurt somebody. Again, because this wheel and rim assembly is, and, and brake assembly, everything else is mounted to this outside hub, it's no longer taking the weight of the Jeep. So this is where the extra tow capacity comes in because you're not putting now trailer weight also on this. If it was a floating one, these would be bolted together. Sorry for the horrible visuals. Hopefully that shines a little bit of light on what a floating axle means. Now they're also easier to repair as well because you're basically just dealing with this center shaft spline on both sides. You pull stuff apart, maybe even easier on a trail repair. This is a huge upgrade for Jeep. There's a lot of Jeep owners that actually will upgrade their axles to floating, uh, floating axles. Um, as an upgrade to, to do off-roading. You find floating axles on RVs and trucks and, and heavy duty, you know, heavy hauling, you know, vehicles like that because they are safer. They can handle more power. The axle isn't holding the weight of the vehicle. There's really a lot of um, positives. The only negative I can think of is usually the, the center differential, the pumpkin, whatever you want to call it, that area becomes a little larger. But I think overall the floating axle is more advantageous and certainly more robust. So hopefully that shines a little light on what the heck a floating axle is. So if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think of the new 2024 Wrangler. Let us know what you think. Is a floating axle, was that a, was that a worthwhile upgrade to the Wrangler? And uh, hopefully, again, I know this was really, really, really crude, but at least if you had no idea what a floating axle is, this can shine a little light on, uh, on what it is and uh, what to expect. Um, when you, when you hear the terminology. So as always, thanks again, and we'll see you at the next video.